Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're talking about the moon. Not the whole thing, of course. We're talking about something that you might see in this video right here, taken by an amateur Japanese astronomer, and visible as the flash that you see right there. All of this is in real time, with all of this documented in late February of 2023. And so essentially, we're talking about lunar collisions, or lunar bombardment. Because obviously what you're seeing right here is a lunar impact, except that in this case, it's surprisingly bright, and most importantly, it lasted for over one second. Implying that this was a big one. But we still don't really know exactly what it produced, probably a relatively big crater, and at the moment, nobody really knows what sort of a rock would create this. But in this video, I still wanted to talk about some things that we do know based on previous observations and based on a lot of different calculations made over the last decade. Something that naturally is going to become really important if one day we end up having a crude colony on the moon with people actively going out and exploring the surface. The obvious question here is, is it actually safe? Is there any chance that anyone will ever get killed by a micrometeorite, which as you can see right here, can potentially be somewhat dangerous? Just based on the flash alone here, it was very likely equivalent to an explosion over a thousand kilograms of TNT in power, although very likely much more powerful. The actual calculations still have not been done. And so let's discuss the micrometeorite collision on the moon and of course on planet Earth. And when it comes to Earth, the calculations here are a little bit more simple. We know that on average approximately 33 tons of micrometeoroids arrive to our planet every single day, and the majority burn up in the upper atmosphere, leaving nothing behind. Only some make it closer to the surface, although even small rocks leave something behind in the upper atmosphere, something that's actually visible from the International Space Station. They produce this unusual orange glow you see, approximately 100 kilometers above the surface, this is known as the sodium layer. And it's actually used in astronomy by using certain types of lasers to excite these sodium atoms and to then use them as a kind of a guide in various astronomical programs. And so all of those micrometeoroids create this on Earth. But Earth has a very thick atmosphere, Moon does not. And so every tiny particle that strikes the Moon leaves something behind. Even the micrometeoroids that are super super tiny are able to create tiny craters in everything on the Moon. What you see right here is a tiny microcrater on the surface of a very small fragment collected during the Apollo 11 mission that's actually inside the glass fragment that was taken from the rock and was visible inside the glass fragment. In other words, this is a very very tiny crater that was created in the lunar rock and was most likely created by an extremely tiny particle. A particle moving at anywhere from 20 to 70 kilometers per second. In this case, this was magnified approximately 800 times. And so even though our eyes are only capable of seeing the larger craters on the moon, today it's believed that approximately 3 tons of material strike the surface here pretty much every single day as well. But all of them leave something behind. But only much much larger rocks are going to create something that's visible from planet Earth or even detectable by more complex telescopes. For example, a smaller rock approximately 5 kilograms in mass would create a tremendously large explosion with a crater over 9 meters across that releases 75 tons of material flying at ridiculously high speeds. In this case, this ejecta is potentially really dangerous to any future colony. A lot of this can travel for several kilometers before crashing back to the moon. And most of the energy here is going to be responsible for producing the crater, but some energy produces the heat and the visible light, or basically infrared and optical light. And this is exactly why we're able to see these bright flashes. And for approximately two decades now, NASA has been trying to figure out how often these occur and how dangerous these could potentially be to an astronaut on the surface. And so in the last few years, they've actually conducted several observations of the darker part of the Moon in order to determine how often this happens, while also trying to figure out other bigger impacts and how they actually connect to the impacts on planet Earth. Turns out that there is a correlation between a lot of very famous impacts on our planet and, of course, the Moon. But when it comes to the smaller impacts, there were two main projects that tried to do this scientifically. The European Space Agency's NELIOTA project and NASA's own project that lasted for a few years that essentially looked at the surface trying to detect various impactors. With both projects being relatively successful, here's what NASA saw in 15 years of observations. But intriguingly, the average turned out to be pretty high, approximately 8 impacts per hour would generate some kind of a flash on the surface. 
or basically we should be seeing approximately 170 per day. Although I guess most of them would be relatively small and hard to see. And in terms of size, all of these rocks are believed to be at least as big as a ping pong ball, but moving at very high speeds, over 20 km per second. But the majority will produce a relatively small explosion, maybe about 3 to 10 kg of dynamite in power. However, the rock that was most likely seen just now was definitely much larger, at least 2 meters across, which statistically seem to happen at least every 4 years. And in this case, the explosion is much more powerful, close to about 1000 tons of TNT in power. And that one would definitely be visible even with a basic telescope you can buy on Amazon. But the bigger question for ESA and NASA is really the safety. How likely are these to damage some structure that we're going to build on the moon at some point? And how likely is anyone to get hurt? Well, it turns out that the statistics here are in our favor. Because of the large surface on the moon, a ping pong sized meteoroid may only strike the area of a smaller base possibly every 1000 years, maybe even less than that. But more importantly, when calculating the chances of an astronaut being hit by one of these rocks, turns out that the actual risk is much lower. It's approximately 1 in a million, or surprisingly even less likely, than being hit by a lightning on planet Earth. Or just to rephrase this, an astronaut is less likely to be hit by a meteoroid on the moon than being hit by a lightning on planet Earth, at least based on the preliminary calculations. Nevertheless, there are still quite a lot of micro collisions and a lot of much smaller rocks that we still don't really understand or do not know much about, but normally the modern spacesuits are designed to withstand these smaller collisions and so they shouldn't really be a concern. It's anything that's over 1 mm in size that could be dangerous, but at the moment the statistics seems to be on our side. With the bigger rocks, as you can see from this image, being somewhat common, but not that common. This is after 15 years. And so at the moment, this does not seem to be a major concern for future colonies or future astronauts. But obviously these are still very preliminary observations and somewhat preliminary discoveries. Nevertheless, this is definitely going to be important for the upcoming Artemis mission, and so I'm sure we're going to be hearing more about this, and of course this, in the months to come. At the moment though, this is just a really cool detection and something that probably happens once every few years. But once we learn more about this, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.